Germany, they make the rules. In Britain, they obey the rules. In France, they bend the rules. In Spain, they break the rules. And of course, in Italy, they have no rules at all. <laughs> Was Europe grateful that German taxpayers had decided to fund their lavish lifestyles? Well, Sarkozy was, but you guys decided to get rid of him. So he painted this picture of Germany as a victim. He, he, gave, paint, he gave us the idea of hard-working Germans slaving away to fund indolent scroungers in the rest of Europe. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a perception that we on the opposition resent. Why? Because it's wrong. In quarter three of 2012, the European recession deepened, despite the bailouts. And today, ladies and gentlemen, the economy is still faltering. A large proportion of Germany's trade, 61% indeed, which in turn constitutes 25% of its GDP, no thank you, is with the rest of Europe. So ensuring the economic stability of the rest of Europe is very much in Germany's interests. However, if you're financing your trading partner, you're not really trading with them. You're just trading with yourself by sending them money and then having them send it back to you. This isn't really trade. So, to put it quite simply, we don't think that Germany needs to bankrupt itself to save Europe. We think limited mutualization of, mutualization of bonds and uh, European, banking, uh, Euro European banking integration will help to bring the current crisis to an end. But guess what? You don't need a common currency to have capitalism. You do not need a common currency to allow freedom of production, to move the production, no, not at this time, to the most productive countries. Think about NAFTA. Think about the United States and Mexico. The United States and Mexico do not share a common currency. EU membership has become a political liability for Germany, dampening respect for it and its ability to exercise political influence. Now you say that uh, Germany is a political and economic powerhouse and they have no moral responsibility to save the EU. But in the words of uh, the great philosopher Uncle Ben from Spider-Man, don't you agree that with great power comes great responsibility? It's interesting that you talk about responsibility. Because sometimes I think when you take on too much responsibility, you remove the responsibility of the countries that are failing. You tell them it doesn't matter if they have poor policies. It doesn't matter if they have retirement ages at 50, but we're going to bail you out. We had a debate yesterday where we appealed to lots of different stereotypes about Europe. And the ones I learned about Germans is that they're hyper-rational, unsentimentally businesslike, and eminently pragmatic. My point in saying this is this. When you're attempting to decide which of these two teams is giving you the better indication of whether or not Germany has an advantage, has a motivation, has a good reason to continue its membership in the Eurozone, remember that Germans don't do stupid things. We're saying that, the, that Germany itself can shift away its economy and still be stable, Mr. Madam Speaker, by, having, by stepping away from the Eurozone. It can set up its monetary policy so that its mark could be at a higher level um, at levels and whichever they think is best for Germany. So this is beneficial for the German economy. Why is it be beneficial for the other EU nations as well? This is because that even during a business cycle, one of them is eventually going to kill the Eurozone for good. There's no point wasting breath on giving CPR to a European Union when there aren't sustainable practices. Practices. And therefore, Mr. Sp Mr. and Madam Speaker, we're very proud to propose, thank you very much, Bellboy, on this measure. And it is my great pleasure to announce now the winner of the second edition of the Transatlantic Debating Championship. And this is the team of Cambridge.